Hello everyone, I'm Angela Drummond Matthews and this is Composition 2. I hope you enjoyed reading and writing about race and doing the discussion questions last week. This week we'll be reading about gender and we'll learn about a different kind of argument, the Tolman argument. The Tolman style of argument was developed by Stephen Tolman in 1958. It helps to develop arguments by breaking them down into claims, grounds, warrants, backing, qualifiers, and rebuttals. The claim is like the thesis. It's what you intend to prove in your argument. The grounds are the evidence on which your claim is based. This includes facts, reasons, and explanations. The warrant ties the grounds to the claims. Think of it like an assumption that has to be considered in order to justify making the connection between the assertion and the evidence. The backing is any evidence that helps to support the warrant. Qualifiers are any limits that we put on the claim to make it specific and to show our audience which circumstances our claim is valid in. The rebuttal is the section in which you state your opposing views and counter them. You can read about the Tolman argument in Course Basics in the Argument section. Read Forms of Argumentation and the other resources there. Also, I've posted a video in Course Basics that explains the Tolman argument. Watch that video and if you have any questions, We'll discuss them in the Blackboard Collaborate class discussion. Next, I want to discuss a concept that might help you understand why our society is structured the way it is regarding gender. Much of it is based on the great chain of being. The great chain of being is a ranking of living and non-living beings from inanimate objects to God. While the idea of this kind of ranking system stretches back to antiquity, it was in the Middle Ages that the Christian church modified it into a form that, despite all our modern thought, still underlies much of Western thinking. Here's a picture of the great chain of being. You can see it begins with God at the top, then angels, then other spiritual beings, then humans, then animals, then insects, plants, and finally rocks and other inanimate objects. Our focus, though, is on the human realm. Within that section, men are higher on the chain than women. That places them closer to God. And it also makes women closer to animals. It makes it seem natural that women are subject to men in the same way that men are subject to God. Even though we think of ourselves as knowing better now, these ideas persist in society. Society thinks of gender kind of like this stair-step model, with men on the upper step and women on the lower step. All of the things that we associate with men are on the upper step, and all of the things we associate with women are on the lower step. Now, women's rights movements have fought for women to be equal to men, and our society has complied in certain ways. We said, Okay, women, it's okay if you want to come up here to the upper step. You can get a job. You can wear pants. You can cut your hair short. You can play sports and so on. But we didn't get rid of the steps. So if a man then wants to do things that are associated with women, he gets denigrated and looked down upon. We still insult men by associating them with women's characteristics. Men still think of women in powerful positions as being out of place. If we were to really have equality of gender, it would mean that not only could women do whatever they want, but so could men. We would have the same feelings about a man wearing a dress as we do a woman wearing pants. Now we're opening up to the idea that gender isn't even binary. Yet, we're still holding on not only to the idea that gender is a black and white issue, but that it exists in a hierarchy when neither of those things is actually true. Think about this 
when you're doing your readings. I hope you're reading widely in the list and finding issues that spark your interest. Come to the Blackboard Collaborate class discussion to discuss these and any other issues you might have. By the end of the week, you'll need to do your research plan, outline, and annotated bibliography. The Tolman outline as presented in the forms of argumentation document in Course Basics might be confusing. It's not straightforward like the classical argument. When you write your Tolman essay, you might end up putting your grounds, warrants, and backing in different places depending on what makes sense to you and to your argument. I've posted a sample to Tolman argument essay and a Tolman guide with an example essay in Course Basics. You'll be able to see where claims, grounds, warrants, backing, and qualifiers appear in the sample essay, and the guide explains how each element is used in an essay. That should give you a better idea of how to structure your argument. You can also use the alternative Tolman argument that you'll find in Course Basics. That outline shows you another way to structure your essay. Ultimately, the needs of your topic will dictate where things go in the essay. In your research plan, of course, you'll identify your topic and your thesis statement. Please be sure that you have an arguable thesis. Review the information on thesis statements in Course Basics. Next, determine how you'll prove the validity of your thesis. What questions do you need to ask? Do your research, and then do your annotated bibliography. Once you've found your sources, you should know what your grounds, warrants, and backing are. Write your outline and label each element as you include it. Of course, your claim is the thesis. Which bit of evidence is the grounds? Which statements are warrants? Which parts provide backing? I'll be looking for these elements in the outline. Then start on your rough draft. Complete your rough draft by Friday, then peer edit on Saturday. When you peer edit, don't just look over the paper and say, oh, that looks fine. Pretend it's your paper. Would you be satisfied with the grade that paper will get? What can your friend do to improve the paper? Check the thesis statement. Is it arguable? Check the elements of the argument. Does the essay contain the components of the Tolman argument? What about the MLA style? Did your classmate use a proper heading and page numbers? Are the in-text citations correct? What about the works cited page? Are there spelling or punctuation errors? Remember, you can email me to ask questions during that time. When everyone has peer edited, take some time to go over your paper. Think about what your peers said. If you want, you can make an appointment with the writing center to get their help on the paper. Try to do that early so they have time to schedule you. Finally, you should be able to revise and turn in your final draft on Sunday. That's all for now. I hope you enjoy reading and watching documentaries about gender this week. As always, email me if you have any issues. Have a great week. Bye-bye.